We're making a list. We're checking it twice. We're not even going to talk about naughty or nice because that's not the point right now. We're getting ready for Advent, which is going to be starting at a Sunday near you. Advent starts four full weeks before Christmas with a little bit of squishy time for however much time there is between that last Sunday and Christmas itself. This Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We are starting. There's a lot of things to talk about because there's a lot of ways to do Advent and I'm doing a very special Advent that I have prepped for a year and a half for. So yeah, if you're wanting to do an Advent like mine, you, you, this may be a future plan for you. Or not. We shall see. Let's talk about prepping for Advent as we walk together down Creation's Fast. Hello everyone, my name is Charlie, I am a Christopagan Druid and Priest of Bridget. Hello everyone, I'm a creepy elf on the shelf. Watching. And your name is? Oh no, I don't want to give my name now. My name is Brian. Oh, uh, mm. I have never understood Elf on the Shelf. I have never, mm, we're not doing it, that's not the topic for today. Uh, so why is the Elf on the Shelf the weirdest modern demon episode next month? Let us know in the comments and I will definitely do that episode. Because, yes, I have feels about this weird torture goblin that is being imposed on children so that they are ready to live under a violent, evil, corrupt surveillance state. Anyway, hi. Today we're going to be talking about Advent, or that elf on the shelf free land that hopefully we are all going to in the near future. As a chef, I always think any good prep starts with getting yourself riled up about something so that when it comes time to chopping, hammering things, and stabbing things, you can vent and work all of that energy out. Sure. Why not? Why not? But before we get into it, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whatever the terminology is on the app you happen to be listening to us on. We do original Christo, Pagan, and Druid episodes five days a week, Monday through Friday on this podcast. And you don't want to miss a thing because we there's a lot of cool stuff coming. Alrighty. So Advent, we've kind of covered before in our episode, why on, but that you can go back and check out if you missed it. But in brief. Advent is the time of year where we are preparing for the birth of the child of light. We are getting ready for the rebirth of the sun. We are getting ready for the light to re-enter the world, whichever metaphor best suits you and your practice. Whether you're celebrating Yule, Christmas, any of the other holidays that happen to fall in this time period for various reasons, that's what we're getting ready for. Advent prep is typically, if you just want to do the final countdown, which I know a lot of people really want to just put Europe on and just shout to the synthesizers. That's fine. Just get yourself an advent calendar and count down the days and have all of the wonderful little toys, tchotchkes, candies, whatever you have filling your advent calendar. That's fine. With all seasons, you really do need to tailor them to your personal interest and what is moving you in them. The actual holidays themselves are a little bit different. That's an opportunity to play with the energies more. I think you can do that with the seasons as well. But if you're not feeling it this year, that's fine. Get yourself a the yummy chocolate advent calendar and have a treat every day leading up to Christmas. You also may want to do an advent wreath. Very simple. You have yourself five candles. Light one candle each week leading up to advent and the fifth candle on Christmas day. And when you have all five, five lit, it's a beautiful practice. If you want to do that practice, if you head over to wisdomscry.com, I have done a set of Advent blessings, little prayers that can be said on those days that kind of take you through this meditation from the primordial wisdom that played before God, before creation, all the way through to the birth of the Christ child. If you're interested in that, head over to wisdomscry.com and you can find those there. I'm doing something different this year. I don't know how many people are really doing what I'm doing this year. I want to explain it to give you an idea of how you can embrace the spirit of the season without having to be rigidly confined to any of the imagery of the season, for example. The solstice this year in on the Druid calendar, we are heading towards Alban Arthen, or the time of the bear, the time of Arthur, the one or the other of those. I have been thinking for a while now that I have not done a lot of grail mysticism and magic for a while and thought 
this would be a wonderful thing to start a practice for this time. And I've kind of gone a little overboard in my prep this year. For example, for the last couple of years, I found a carnelian cup. Ended up getting it in December, too late to start it for Advent last year. It's that you use for the grail in my practice. And this is important to remember because one, a cup that would have been used at the Last Supper would have been made out of stone. Don't let Indiana Jones fool you. Wood is not kosher. You cannot use wood during Passover with utensils during Passover. They, they don't count. They, they, they can't, you can't do it. You just can't do it. So they would not have had a wooden cup. They would not have had a clay cup either. Nothing, quote unquote, forest could have been used. In the time period, they would have been allowed either metal, which would have been unreachably expensive for the average person in the region. They could have been glass, which again would have been unreasonably expensive for someone in the region, or they could have been made out of stone. And most of the artifacts that we have found from this time period, it was stone. Also, I happen to believe that the actual grail cup, the actual cup that was used at the Last Supper, is currently in Spain, that it was taken by Peter to Rome and from Rome to Spain by St. Lawrence, and then eventually finding its way there. That is the provenance of the cup. Oh, isn't it crazy that the cup that they have is actually a first century Passover cup that was mined in Judea? Ha! Huh. Funny that. Funny that. So, like, there's a lot of confluence there, and it also happens to be made out of carnelian. It happens to be made out of this red stone, which is why I hunted down one that I could use for this purpose, because since I tend to believe that that is the proper chalice, I wanted not necessarily a replica of it, because, you know, no two stones are ever going to look alike, but, you know, my, my version of that grail. So I have a small red stone cup that I'm going to be using as my stand-in for the grail. A lot of my ritual work and spiritual work is going to be this kind of meditation on the waters of life and the spiritual meaning of the grail. The grail in Druidry is seen as the union point between the energies of the earth, which are symbolized as a triangle pointing up, and the powers of the sun, which are symbolized by the power, the, a triangle pointing down, which unite and become the powers of the moon, which is symbolized, oh, wow, by a circle. So if you draw out real quick a triangle pointing up with a circle on top of it, with a triangle pointing down on top of it, guess what that looks like? A cup! A fire truck! That is where my meditation and my practice is going to be in playing around with some of the symbols from throughout the year, actually, of Parsifal's quest to fi find the Holy Grail really doing both active imagination and other more magical practices to connect myself to that grail story and grail legend and just those energies of rebirth and renewal, that lunar energy that I tend to get along with better than either Teleric or earth energy or solar energy. I tend to deal much better with lunar energy, which is the combination of the two. So that, that that's my advent this year is that moment when the grail is paraded through and everyone sees it, but no one can touch it. Now, you know, it is here and that's going to be the symbolism that I'm going to be focusing on in Advent, that preparation for the quest to go out for a year and a day to find the Holy Grail. The question is, what are you wanting to do for Advent? This, how are you connecting to these energies? How are you connect, connecting to this period really of rebirth? Because given everything that's been going on in the world right now, we need national, local, community, personal rebirth. In a lot of ways, I would say we need global rebirth. We need to get back to a state where we are focusing on the things that really, really matter. So when you're coming up with your own practice for the season, what in your life do you want to be reborn? Where do you see this need for rebirth to come in? What, what, what is it that you really want to see come back to life? What needs to come out of the darkness? I think it's helpful and healthier for those two who want to do a ton of things for holidays coming up that find themselves in this panic state because the instinct is to like go, okay, you know, the holidays coming up, I want to I do all this baking and all this decorations, and I have to do that on Black Friday. 
or I have to do this on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And it's like, it doesn't all have to be done in one day. Like, technically, if you wanted to, since the entire four weeks leading up to this Advent season is all about preparing for it, you can actually just spread that out. Do a little baking every week, you know. This way, then, you can do the gingerbread house, then the cookies, and plus it's probably... And then the cookies again. And then the cookies again. And then the cookies again. And because you got to give a couple weeks between the pies. You know, you just, you finished off all the Thanksgiving pies halfway into December, you know, and the gingerbread house just sits while you're eating the pies, and you can actually just spread it all out. And then, and then it's not like a chore or something to stress over. You're able to actually celebrate and play in those activities. I think the worst thing that the modern world has done to us is made the holidays stressful. And if you do nothing else this Advent season, find ways to de-stress your holidays. Because whether you practice Christmas or not, just from looking at our analytics, the majority of the people who are listening to me are in a country where you are probably going to go out and see Christmas decorations <laughs> if you celebrate Yule instead of Christmas. Oh, one, you can always remember the pagan origins of those things and find ways to connect there. If you don't, so if you don't believe in Jesus, but you see the, the creches out in the public, that could be Modron with the, that could be the birth of the child of light that's going to be captured and put away in the castle for a long time and have to be free. You know, this, th there are many ways that you can reinterpret something because this is the power of art that we really need to stress in our own practice. Because somebody tells you, when you look at this, you're supposed to see this, doesn't mean that that's what you need to see when you see it. Like, I, I'm a big proponent of death of the author, which hurts because I am an author. And yes, I want everybody to see the stories as I wrote them, but they don't. And I have come to accept over the years, begrudgingly, accept this over the years that they're going to see their own truths, their own worldviews presented in the stories that I write. And so just because somebody is putting out a very Christian installation doesn't mean that you can't find ways to turn it around in your head to be something that means something to you. Especially this year. This year's going to be a very interesting holiday season because Christmas and Hanukkah start on the same day this year, which I'm not sure the last time that that, that, that happened. But we're going to be having such a confluence of festivals of light so tightly compacted together between Yule and Hanukkah and Alban Arthen and uh, Christmas and, 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 all kind of clustered right here. It really does feel like a good time to reminisce about what we are bringing back in and to focus on that. I find it very striking, personally, that this year, Christmas and Easter are of Christmas. I find it very striking this year that Christmas and Hanukkah are happening on the same day this year because Hanukkah celebrates the rededication of the temple and Christmas celebrates the birth of God into the world. And Hanukkah is one of the few holidays that Jesus is actually shown celebrating in the Gospels, by the way. Uh, you might not know that because it's generally translated as just Feast of Dedication. And he went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Dedications. And that's Hanukkah. That's what that was. And so it's something that we actually see him practicing. Given everything that's going on right now, while I'm not saying that I feel like I'm living in the middle of the Book of Maccabees, thank God, knock on wood, but I do feel like there needs to be a rededication of the temple. That we're at a point where I feel like so many of those who, like me, refer to themselves as Christian, have lost their minds. Like the church, the temple, really feels like it's... Uh, been torn down in so many ways that it hurts. It hurts me deep down in my soul. I think that's one of the reasons why I had decided to do this grail quest for the year and have been going through the process of collecting things for that. Because for a while now, I've felt like somebody living in the lands of the Fisher King. It feels like there is a wound that will not heal. And the land has gone fallow and will not yield good things. The mythology to me that really fits this time frame, and I mean this for a while, like I felt this for quite some time, really feels like that Fisher King kind of story. Like there's a wound that will not heal 
and it is keeping everything in the state of decay. In some versions of the Grail legend, that is the quest for the Grail, is to find the Grail and go and heal the Fisher King and thus heal the land. I do not have the hubris to believe that my personal quest for the Grail is going to find that once and future antidote that will make everything better universe. I would love to say by this time next year, I will be talking to you about how we can fix everything. I have solved it. Here's the answer. Because I don't think one person is going to be able to do that. But I think more of us who are out there either seeking the maven or seeking to find the Christ child or trying to coax the light back from the darkness or find the grail or whatever the metaphor is that you want to use for this action because this, it's the pan meme they're, they're the same picture this is the power of mythologizing one's own life as yeah. well it's remembering you know these two things one as you already pointed out it's remembering humility remembering you're occupying the space you're supposed to occupy but two remembering that you are the center of your universe you are the hero of your mythology and so therefore you are on your hero's journey and going on this quest will at least will hopefully bring healing to find the grail and be able to bring that healing to your own life. Even if it is just your life, it is still your entire universe. Oh, you never, never underestimate the power of one person who is truly alive. So it's for bring, bring about that change in others. It's vitally important in the mythologizing of our lives. We talk about this a lot that we always pair that with the proper humility because the Messiah has come. It's happened. A, a human will never be a Messiah again. Even the Buddhists agree with this. Maitreya will be a movement, not a person. So the next time somebody starts saying that they are Maitreya, just laugh at them because Maitreya will be a movement, not a person. I really believe the second coming will be a movement, not a person. The more of us who are acting actually Christ-like, forgiving others and healing the sick and tending to the poor and visiting the imprisoned and helping people to get out from under the boots of oppression that are holding them down, we can get to a better place. It may feel a little bit late for you to start making plans. I hate to be flippant about this, but Mary was going to a well to get water and an angel showed up and went, hey, Mary, something is for you. And her response was those beautiful words, let it be done unto me according to your word. Let it be done. She didn't have time to think about, well, what are we going to tell Joseph? What am I going to... She thinks about this afterwards. What am I going to tell any, anybody? So she runs to Elizabeth's house and that, that, right? We could have started talking about this advent months ago. And maybe in future we should. Let me know in the comments if you want to start prep for some of these holidays with more lead time than we've been doing on the podcast. But I think I would have, if I hadn't already been in this place where I've been meditating on the Fisher King and the wound that would not heal and all of that, if that hadn't already been where my mind was for the last couple of years, I probably would have had to have thrown out everything that I had been planning and start planning fresh, the slumped. But because that's where my mind was and that's what I was doing, I, I feel lucky that I, I was planning in the right direction. That is the fun thing about, especially with Advent prep, it, it is prepping for a four week period of prep. So technically you are never too late for it because if you're already between the 25th and of December and 6th of January, if you're already in that holiday period, guess what? You have now started prepping for next year. You're in the middle of celebrating whatever you are already celebrating because life happens. And, and it could be simply that this year is just a reminder that life happens. And if nothing else, this is, if, if you do nothing else, then get, like I said, get yourself a nice advent calendar or maybe get yourself an advent wreath. Or if you need the wreath, just get yourself five nice candles that you can burn five nice candlesticks that you just use for this. Or just use five candlesticks that you love. You don't have to buy anything now. And use this time to prepare for the 12 days of Christmas. Because I really recommend people to do the 12 days of Christmas. Those are more impactful to me than the Advent season because we're going to have in this time period, the feast of Christmas. We have the celebration of Mary, mother of God. We have the slaughter of the holy innocents, which reminds us that we are here to take care of those who are oppressed. 
we have the martyrdom of St. Stephen and we remember the first, those who have died standing up for what they believed is right. We have the presentation of the Lord in the temple. We have the epiphany where the wise men come and visit. There, there's so much hacked in here that we can unpack and really get into the imagery and the power of the story and what it means for us today. Because as Meister Eckhart so rightly said, what does it matter to me if a child was born 2,000 years ago if Christ is not born today? And that's really what we're preparing for, getting ready for that event, that celebration of welcoming that fruit of the tree of life into our life. So much of it comes back to our two main slogans. Better is better. Whatever you have, wherever you're at, is good. And if you can make it even just a little bit better, that's great. This is why I pointed out, like like with Christmas decorations, yes, it's wonderful to have it all up, ready to go. And sometimes people start at the end of November or whatever and start so early. You know, there's nothing wrong with going, I have a little bit of time, I'm going to put up some lights. I have a little bit of time, I'm going to put up this tree the next week. I have a little bit of time because, once again, it's not done on the 25th. Like, so people go, oh, that's it. Story about it's on tearing all down. And it's like, you leave it out for 12 days. You get to enjoy it for 12 days. So all that time leading up to that is prep. It's setting it up. And so better is better. And really finding your own footing here. Because Advent, I think more than any of the other periods that we've set aside throughout the year, really is personal. Because there are probably traditions in your family that you want to keep going forward traditions from your community, from your, where you're from, that you want to keep going forward. And all of those matter. Even if your advent is just watching all of the silly Christmas movies or watching all of the silly Hallmark Christmas romances, you do it. Because this is a time for renewal. If that's something that renews your soul, then that's valid spiritual practice. Because again, as I often say, we take spirituality way too seriously and equate spirituality with solemnity and lose the silliness. I know I say it way too much, but it pains me that the only gospel that includes the phrase Jesus laughed is the gospel of Judas. And I find it telling that this is the only gospel that does because the gospel of Judas is an indictment of the imperial church. And it's the only gospel that ever includes the phrase that Jesus laughed. Because we know he had to have laughed. His detractors called him a drunkard. He was always at parties. He was always at parties. And it wasn't that they said oh, he's the stick in the mud at the parties. Because, you know, if he just went and sat all grumpily in the corner at a party, that's what everyone would have talked about. So he went and he laughed. He, he drank. He partied. What makes something magical is that we bring our intention to it. If you have a social movie that you like, I know when I watch something like Miracle on 34th Street, I want to bring that magic back of when I was a kid and believed in Santa, right? I, I want that magic back, that, that little spark of hope, that little innocence... I've been robbed of. And that intention, just the suspension of disbelief, even if for just a moment, is magical and has an effect on our lives. And you can do that really with any of the activities that you're getting up to. Just make a list and prepare for it. Tell yourself, while we're watching this movie, while we're watching White Christmas this year, or whatever, Char it's Christmas Charlie Brown, or whatever you do in your family, because this is like a Every family has their Christmas movie or movies that you watch every year. Well, guess what? If you do it every year, it's a tradition. If you do it mindfully and with intent, it's a ritual now. It's a ceremony. And even if that ceremony is just singing along to Rosemary Clooney and Bing Crosby and Danny Kay. Or like mine, where thanks to last year now, I've got a new one to put in there. I like to start the holiday season with the Guardians of the Galaxy's Christmas special. Because there's all this stress of getting ready and setting everything up. And it is so silly with such an awesome Christmas anthem that I, I just, it just reminds me to relax and laugh. And it is a time of celebration. Doing all this extra work, setting things up and doing this, that, and the other, and cooking and whatnot. It's for fun. I want to out you to It's the for viewers. celebration. I want to out the listeners. Because when he says do all this extra work, he, he, he is Bob from Boss Burgers. He does a practice turkey every year. He's already bought a couple practice turkeys. Four turkeys. I'm about to be two of them. Two of them are going to become one tweet. Uh, then I'll do later, like in the spring or something, when it's out of season. But 
Yeah, I started by getting a pair of turkeys, and then the other turkeys went on even better sales. So I got more turkeys for later. So he is a lot. Yeah. It's the chef in Yeah. You have to do the practice turkey or the real turkey is not going to be good. It's one of those those jokes. Give a chef a 30-minute meal, and they will spend three days preparing for it. And you wonder, why are they so tired? They did a 30-minute meal, and it's like, yeah, they just spent three and a half days making that 30-minute meal. Because our main endeavor here. If you take nothing away from any of the other things we talk about on these podcasts, we're trying to help you find a way to re-enchant your life, to bring that magic, that mystery, that power back into your life. And that can be something as enjoying the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special or making turkey or making cookies with your kids. All of that can be magical. All of that can be sacred. Some of the most sacred memories I have is laughing with my grandmother in the kitchen it's one of the stories I always try to keep in mind. Martha and Mary are sitting there and she starts, Martha starts to get upset because Mary isn't helping her with any of the, the work, or the prepping and the cleaning and stuff. And it's that whole thing. It's like, those are both proper ways to celebrate as long as you don't make it a thing. The problem was her making it a thing, not that she was in the kitchen prepping and cleaning and cooking and whatnot, because that was her way of expressing her her joy of the holiday, but it was when she turned it from joy into a chore, into drudgery. Let us know how you're going to be celebrating Advent this year. Anything special planned? I told you about my fun experiences with the Grail. I might try to catalog some of it, put it out there in the world for people to follow the progress. I don't know. I get weird about stuff like that. That's something you're interested in. Let me know. I might try to do more of that. But I'd love to know, what are you doing? Do you have anything planned? Now that we've told you that it can be something silly. Did that change your plans or make you realize, oh, I do have plans? Let us know in the comments. If you're listening to us on YouTube or Spotify, you leave a comment right there. If you're listening to us anywhere else, even if they said that you can leave comments, they don't tell us when you do. So you can leave a comment there because engagement is magic. And then head over to creationspasts.com, click on chat, and you can leave a comment there. We will know and we'll be able to respond to you. While you're there, if you have a few dollars, you can pass our way. You can think about joining a membership, or you can support us on Patreon or Kofi, which you can use Kofi for one-time donations as well. I'm CE Dorset on both. That money really does go a long way to helping us keep the lights on, keep a roof over our heads, and dinner on the table. If you don't have any money right now, don't worry about it. Just if you, anything we've done is helpful to you, think about sharing it with others that might find it helpful, because we really are doing this to get the message out. Thank you to everybody who helps us in all the many ways that you do. And as we're going out, O Holy Mary, star of the sea, who guides us to all the paths that we must go down, our shining and shimmering North Star, help us to find the path that we shall, should walk as we are searching, searching for a way to bring light back into this dark world. Amen. Amen. Amen.